So you might be wondering why I'm at home now, halfway through the divert valve job. And it's because I had to come home originally because the divert valve that I had in my stores, which I picked up, which I thought was a brand new divert valve, wasn't. How are we doing everyone? Thanks for tuning back into today's video. Now, this one, I've got a couple of jobs on it. One which is an absolute mess up on my part. It ended up costing me, not money, just time. And I lost probably about an hour because I made a schoolboy error and I didn't check what part I had for the job. And it was, it was the right box, but the wrong part in the box. <laughs> and it was really like, I think, half eight, nine o'clock by the, uh, the time that I was at the job. So yeah, wasn't good, but got it resolved eventually. Well, same day, just had to make another round trip. We also had a poo pipe repair that we had to do. Me and Josh got that done. And then yeah, so it was just those two jobs. There were other jobs that we'd done in the day. I, I fill it in uh, at the end what we got up to. But these were the two main jobs that we filmed. There was one that I wish I'd filmed, but I didn't get, I didn't film it at the time because I thought it wasn't going to be interesting. And sod's law, it ended up being an interesting job, but it is what it is. So I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all on Sunday. Have a great week. Morning. So me and Josh today, spending a day of uh, working together. First job we've got to do is we've got to sort out this car stack. Now this is more of a Josh's forte. So you might remember this job from one that came to a couple of weeks ago where I put in a new bar mixer, but customer also told me that they've had a crack on the stack pipe here somewhere and someone's done a little patch repair, but it's still been leaking. So I've employed the services of Mr. Hamilton Plumbing Services. So he's, I'm gonna be giving him a hand. We're gonna cut, I don't know where yet. Uh, I'll let Josh decide where we're going to cut, but there's basically going to be what, a cut here or probably about somewhere there. And then probably above, no, I think on that section there, section on the straight there, section, there. put a cut there. We basically need to just renew this elbow, a bit of pipe, bit of pipe there, time saver coupling, and we should be okay. It's not raining today, which is good, but it's still wet from last night, so it's a little bit slippery. So, uh, Josh has got his, uh, his new recip with his new Milwaukee blades. So let's start cutting some poo pipe. Ugh, fun. He's gonna be doing the cutting, I'm gonna be doing most of the watching. <laughs> Okay, so we've finally cut through the first section of the costs. We, luckily I've got my recip, Josh has got his recip. So that one, it was good to get the cut started, but as we're getting close to the wall, the handle kept hitting the wall, and which is when we swapped over to the Dewalt one, because it's a compact one, because of the shape of it, it allowed me to get close to the wall, and then obviously chop through that way. So that's cut through. Now we're gonna jump up there, make our cuts wherever we need to cut. I don't know if I can set the camera up anywhere here because it's quite windy up there as well, so I don't want the camera falling, but I'll see if I can set it up. If not, might be able to mm. pop it on there, but yeah, we'll see. Don't want it falling down, but you know what, it's, what it looks like. We're going to be basically cutting cast stack pipe. So if you've seen us do it once, we're just going to do it again. If I can film it, I'll film it. If not, I can't. Let's see, let's just crack on.
Josh has uh, got the lube ready. ready to go, mate. There we go. So that's been cut out and up there. So now we just got a, where's your bag of fittings here? Uh, we'll get a bag of fittings. Got a couple of time saver couplings in there. An assortment of fittings, so we'll see what we can work with. And uh, try and get this renewed. Yeah, so that'll just slip all the way down. We'll connect it up and then slide it up, which makes it a lot more easier to just adapt onto the cast. Right, let's get this stack done. Right, so we've done the plastic bit. I'm gonna pass the camera to Josh. I'm gonna pass him the mic as well. Let's clip that on somewhere from you. And I'm gonna go upstairs and flush the toilet. I'm just gonna do a live test to see, make sure we ain't got no leaks. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. You all good? Uh-oh. What? She's got two legs. Oh, no. Hold on, how do I put it? Hold on. Huh? Yeah, so that stack pipe repair didn't quite go to plan as we wanted it to because there was another leak on it. Now, yes, we probably should have checked it first, but it is what it is. So it wasn't a leak coming from anything that we'd done. There was another crack on the elbow further up. Now, to change that elbow, you can't just change the elbow. It's then just a case of renewing. The whole stack so um, we've given a price to the customer and just waiting for her to get back to us and then if she's happy to go ahead we will get the whole stack renewed but it's l less of a leak than it was before but there's still obviously a bit of a leak then nonetheless so we'll see what happens with that and then we'll go from there okay so we are at this next one uh, i don't think there's light in here but customer has reported that they were having problems with the hot water. So heating is on at the moment. Uh, right. Uh, so they've got two filling loops here, built in one and external one, which is fine. Okay, Mr. Hamilton, would you like to run a hot tap? Ah, oh, bathroom's right here. Lovely. And let's see. Let's see what the boiler's doing. that goes over 80, we've got a blockage problem. It's not, it's not really overheating. Up, yeah. Right. Let me get my thermometer out and let's check what the temperature, the hot, the water coming out of the hot. Yeah, that's sitting at 79. I reckon diverter then. What we'll do, we'll check the temperature coming out of the hot taps. And then we'll isolate the flow pipe and then see if that improves it. So at the moment, okay, so it's about 43 degrees, 42.8. So 
So 43. Right, let's isolate the flow under the boiler. The boiler's not cut out, so I don't think it's an overheating issue. Let's isolate the flow. Okay, and let's see. Right, that's gone up a bit, but let's also now check. So remember, we had 43 on here before. That's straight away, 45. 46 so that's already jumped up what's the temperature on the boiler 78 okay so it's not a block plate oh hang on that's cooling down again 45 Going up, 46, right let's see what's the hot water actually set to on here, hot water temperature set to 50 which we're getting 47 yeah, so, so right. it's about right. Yeah. All right, so it's gone up to 47.9, 48 degrees. Right, so it's not a block plate or anything. Let me open up the flow pipe again and let's see if that temperature drops again. So we got up to 48. Yeah, that is dropping now. So we do have heat getting lost. Drop down to 42 from 47, five degrees. So, so there is, looks like there's an issue with the diverter. One other thing I want to check as well, let's isolate the cold feed under the boiler to make sure we haven't got a passing mixer or anything like that, which could also be, so if I shut that off, the water should stop. which is stopped. Okay, so that rules out a passing mix or anything and the demand on the boilers stopped as well. It is a, it is a strange one, but it's all pointing to a diverter valve issue. But she was saying that they have to run it at a trickle in order to yeah. get hot water. We're trying to find out a bit. Yeah, we'll find a bit more. Right, we've come to the conclusion that it's definitely a diverter valve. So there's not everything else checks out. So we're just going to change the diverter valve. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? New ones here. Let's get this drained down. Let's hope the pressure sensor is right. We're showing 1.9 bar at the moment. So once we drain it down, hopefully that will show zero. So let's get to work. So you might be wondering why I'm at home now, halfway through the divert valve job. And it's because I had to come home originally because the divert valve that I had in my stores, which I picked up, which I thought was a brand new divert valve, wasn't. So at that job, I'd taken out the old divert valve, 
I was ready to put the new one in, open up the box, and it was an old used one. Oh. And the job was about half an hour away from home. So I ended up having to, well, I went with where I was working with Josh today. We had another emergency leak to go to, which is luckily 10 minutes from that job that we were at. So I went and sorted that out, then came home. Luckily I had one diverter valve left. I thought I had more, but that was my last one. And I had one last brand new one. So I need to get some more now. But yeah, it it was just a headache. And then I just couldn't be bothered. But it was, what, the time now is what, 10 past 10. So, and I've only just got in probably about 10, 10, 15 minutes ago. So by the time I got back there, I couldn't be bothered to record it. You've seen what it's like to change a diverter valve. So literally got in there, greased up all the O-rings, popped the new one in, tested it, done, got out of there and made my way home. So yeah, problem got sorted. We had, in the end, we actually got a slightly higher rise in the temperature as well. So I think initially it was the maximum we were getting was about 48 degrees when I was turning off the flow valve. But after we changed the diverter valve, we actually got 50 degrees, which is what the uh, hot water temperature was set to on the boiler as well. So it all married up, it was all fine, and now I'm home. So it's been an interesting day. There was another job that I wish I'd recorded, but I thought it's not going to be that interesting. It was a tap change and a boiler service, standard boiler service, but they also had an issue with the washing machine. So they've had some builders in who've been basically refurbing the whole property and from the washing machine, they weren't getting any water coming out. So we did some tests, worked our way backwards, checked if it was the hose, it wasn't the hose, checked if it was the valve, it wasn't the valve. And then what we actually found was under the kitchen sink, there was a gate valve. Now that gate valve was going down into the ground and then where the washing machine was on, on another area of the kitchen, there was a cold feed coming up from the ground and then it was obviously valved off in the washing machine valve. So we kind of put two and two together and we assumed that that gate valve was probably broken shut. So turned off the water, swapped out the gate valve for a butterfly valve and yep, that sorted it. So yeah, it just goes to show there's a lot of problem solving to be done in plumbing. It's just about going, starting from the end and working your way backwards to find where the source of the problem is. Similar to boiler breakdowns, you have the problem and you just have to work your way backwards to see what it could be. And then that's when you can start investigating. So yeah, so that got done as well. I didn't record the leak because we were already behind on time of everything, but it was literally, it was such a weird one. It was a soldered elbow up in the loft on the cold water storage tank. So it was an elbow feeding the cold, an elbow on the cold feed to the cold water storage tank. And it just had a pinhole, it was just spraying out. So luckily I had a flexi in the van, so literally turned the water off, cut it, put a flexi on and reinstated it and it's all back up and running. So yeah, um, it's been a busy day, but done now. Gonna wind down for the night, well try to anyway, you know what it's like when you're self-employed, it's hard to switch off. Got a bit of paperwork to do, so I'm going to try and get that done and then just try and hit the bed and get a good night's sleep. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one.